Hey, y'all. I want to talk today about why the messenger matters. Um, and you'll, you'll see what I mean. When you share your life with people online, you are opening yourself up to scrutiny from people, from the public. And that is something you have to kind of prepare yourself for. Um, you know, I've had subscribers who have supported me openly be attacked by people who watch my content but are not fans. Um, I've told you guys before, I'll never understand hate watching. I don't watch stuff I don't like. If I watch anything I don't like, it's because another content creator is reacting to it. Uh, and I have, you know, I'll go, they'll include it in their content. And so that's how I'm watching it. Now, I understand that just because I'm like that doesn't, I understand that just because I'm like that doesn't mean other people are. There are going to be people who can hate watch, watch people they don't like. Um, and, you know, to each his own. But the reason the messenger matters is when I do videos and people say things like I'm, I'm going to post this comment uh, in this person's opinion. It hits different when you know the person either does not like you or has grown to dislike you or never liked you than it does when you feel like the person genuinely likes you but is giving you constructive criticism. So there have been, you know, people who will come on lives or comment on lives and say, you know, they'll disagree with me or they'll get me to think of it from a different point of view. Um, and I can respect that. But remember how I told you guys I have a, a great memory for insignificant things? Um, that's part of what makes me a good writer is I can remember things that have been said or done and describe them back verbatim as to what I saw or heard and that but also YouTube will let you see what a person has commented before so if you go on someone's page and comment they can look at your comment history and after a while if you see no matter what you're talking about if there's a chance for a person to jab you they will. So this person had, you know, this is the person who told me, you know, before, basically, like, you're a whole felon, like, basically, how dare you have standards, or how dare you think you're going to get a man that has money to marry you, you basically better take what you can get, or, you know, my husband, this is all from the same person, well, my husband is black, and he's a blue collar worker, and he's a whatever degree pump plumber, he has a certification, blah, 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 he makes over six figures, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, to, to each his own, if that's what you want for you, just like what I want, my standards I have are for me. And just like I'm willing to be single if I can't get what I want out of a relationship, to each his own, you know? So that's to me why the messenger matters. If, if the person doesn't like you, never liked you, or they started out liking you until you stopped being BMI or whatever the situation is, it matters. I used to be... A person that I would leave comments up no matter what unless they were cussing but no matter if the person disagreed with me didn't you know like what I had to say was you know rude about my aesthetic this is back when I showed my face whatever I would leave the comments on there to drive engagement uh, plus I feel like I'm one of those people that can look at both sides of an argument um, I don't do that anymore because if I feel like you've made it clear that you don't like me, but you still watch my content. And if there's a chance to come out and say, you suck, you take it. Eh, that's a little bit different. I've, I've learned to close my doors to that kind of energy, you know? And I, like I said, I know there are going to be people that hate watch and, you know, no matter what you say or do or how you try to explain something from your point of view, you know, like with this comment, I felt like, you know, this person start, stopped speaking to me this isn't the first time this person has stopped speaking to me. And my issue now isn't even this person speaking to me. That that was an issue two years ago. The issue now is just I don't want to see this person at my own family events. You know, she says, well, your uncle sees her as family. And that's the problem is the filter of who something is coming through. Just because my uncle sees something as something doesn't mean that's what it is. Biologically, this girl is not a part of this side of my family. It doesn't matter how he sees something. Just the same way, it doesn't matter how I see something. I'm just talking about pure science here. If the person is biologically related, 
And I'm also talking about an issue of respect. So it's like to this person that says, well, you started by coming on the internet telling their business. This person has stopped talking to me before, before this internet thing, before I ever started my channel. This isn't the first, per this isn't the first time this person has discarded me. And stupidly, after that first discard, I went back because there was a death in the family. Her brother died and I had to plan his funeral and she and I got close again. I should have left that relationship in the past. I've learned now when people discard you, believe them. When people show you that for whatever reason, you are no longer of interest to them, you no longer benefit them, however it is they look at it and they don't explain to you what you did wrong, let them stay discarding you. Don't, you know, think, oh God, thank you, Jesus. This person wants to talk to me again, you know? And I think that that comes with developing self-esteem and self-respect, you know? I, I try to look at relationships with women very similarly to how I look at relationships with men. If a man discards me and doesn't, you know, explain to me what the problem is or what the issue is or why he's discarded me, even if it's, oh, cat, I found somebody that looks better, they're younger, they're finer, they're whatever they want, they just discard me without explanation, I wouldn't talk to that man again. I wouldn't give that man another chance. And I've learned to be that way with friends. To be that way, honestly, with anybody that, you know, relative of, or not, if they discard me and it's, it's not explain what the issue is, then I've learned my place in that person's life is not what I thought it was. And I move accordingly. And so to me, it's the same thing with viewers. If I've had a lot of viewers who, when I first started, I, y'all know I was very different back then. I was married to a black man back then. I was, a uh, Whew, child, I was pro BLM. I was pro black man. I was, you know, a pick me. I was a barber, the builder. I was all kind of things that I am no longer. And of course that, you know, I was also, <clears throat> I've never said anything bad about single mothers, uh, or out of wed like mothers on my channel. My, my views have become very conservative and I know that that's gonna, you know, change how different people see me. Um, they're going to say, you know, well, she started out being this way, but now she's anti, you know, single parents and anti this and anti that. All these things that the person may have originally liked about me. So I know I've lost some viewers because of that, but I've gained other viewers also because of that. I don't think you can or should be afraid to become who you are supposed to be because some people are not going to like it. You know, I know that my views are going to offend some people but that they're still my views. They're still how I see the world now. And I think one of the things that I've learned about people like trying to swap your destiny or twinning you or something like that, they see the good that your life is or that your life has been. But it's, it's also, you got to take the good with the bad. The things that have made me me, unfortunately, there were some very bad things that happened to me that have made me me that it made me who I am. And that's with anybody. When you see people and you covet what they want, you know, and you want to take notes on their life to replicate it, you're not just looking at the good stuff that they've been through. You've also got to take the fire with everything else. And that's something people aren't willing to do. You're not willing to look at someone's life and say, okay, well, they went through X, Y, and Z, and I'm willing to take that. Most people are not. Most I don't know anyone that I'm friendly with who could deal with the things I've dealt with in life or go through the things I've gone through in life and frankly still be sane. Um, I, I want to say the closest is my mother, but you know, but I don't, I don't have any friends that have gone through the things that I've gone through in life. And that's fine. I'm not saying your friends should replicate your experiences. I think you can be friends with people with vastly different experiences. The issue for me is always an issue of respect. I feel like people show you how they feel about you in the way that they respect you or don't respect you. And that doesn't matter who it is, you know, whether it's a relative or a friend or a lover or whatever, if they don't respect you, then to me, they don't love you. And so if you're saying to someone, this is how you feel about something and I feel like you're disrespecting me by doing it. And this person says, well, I don't care. This is what I'm going to do. Then they're showing you how they feel about you. And it's the same thing with viewers. 
I've told you guys, and you guys know most of y'all will never meet. I always think if I win like the lottery, all my special subscribers, I always in my mind, I always think I'm gonna like invite and pay for all my special subscribers to like meet me somewhere on on this globe, you know, all expense paid trip to let's have a you know a time together. That's like my you know how you think of fantasies or whatever. That's how I always think if something if I came into great wealth, that's something I would do. Because just through the years, whatever it is I've been through, you know, you guys have been there. And I think it also helps when people who don't know you in real life, you can give them, you know, like this person says, it's like you forgot what you've done. No, I haven't forgot what I've done. I, I, I still do it. I haven't forgotten it at all. You know, she says, oh, well, you put this person's business out there. That's why they stopped speaking to you. And it's like, no, that's not why this person stopped speaking to me. This person stopped speaking to me because apparently we were in competition for a man she said she wasn't interested in until she found out or realized that he was rich. You know what I mean? And didn't give me the memo. I wouldn't be even minded if she said, oh girl, wait a minute, he's rich. Let me handle this one because you can't land these big fish yet. That would have been fine with me. But don't say, oh girl, he ugly, you can have him. And then later on realize, oh, wait a minute, he's a multimillionaire. And then don't tell me girl let me let me have this one you know pass this one to an expert kind of thing you know so it's like to me that's how this all got started again um and I also feel like you know I remember her saying when when I first heard about you talking about heard me heard about you talking about me on my, your channel I should have never forgiven you any of you guys that have watched my channel for years know that 99% of the stuff I ever said about this person was applaudatory. It was all good stuff, you know what I mean? But she also said, you know, when I found out you were talking about my mom on your channel, I should have never forgiven you. I think people forget that just because someone is their mom doesn't mean they aren't also related to someone else. But this happened even when my grandmother was live. These people who, you know, will want to fight you for talking about their mom will say the exact same stuff about their mom. You and this person could have conversations about their mom and her toxicity but once somebody dies, all of a sudden we're supposed to forget that they were problematical. You know what I mean? And you, I, I honestly feel like you can love someone and not like their behavior. I'm a case in point of that. I know my family loves me. They may not like my behavior. I love my mom. I don't like her. My mom is good at discarding people too. It, I, apparently it runs in their family because a, a lot of those siblings are like that. You know, my grandmother's children are like that where they can just discard people and you know, it's weird to me. My grandmother, what? Well, she never discarded me, child. I, so I was about to say she she didn't discard people, but I don't know about that because I was her granddaughter, and she made it very clear that she loved her her grandkids more than her kids. And I think I've told you guys my theory on that, or that something I've observed on the internet. That I saw on the internet is that the reason grandparents love their grandchildren more than their children. It's because their grandchildren remind them of their kids when they were little. And it's like, of course, you have the hindsight of when you're a grandparent, all the things you should have, could have, and would have done had you known better and had that experience. But, you know, when you're a parent, you're younger. When you're a grandchild, when you have, you know, grandchildren, you see things through the eye of time. And you see how your behavior influenced your kids and their personality. So... I feel like I, I can love my grandmother and miss her and all those things and remember all the great times we had and the great conversations we had, but I can still look at her with a critical lens and say, you know, she's a product of the way she was raised and choices she made. And that's with anybody. I feel like I can look at myself like that too, you know. Of course, I'm going to be a little bit more biased because it's me that I'm dealing with. So I think the messenger matters. Um uh, when people are giving you critiques because if you know the person doesn't like you for whatever reason it's going to change kind of how you take their criticism you know there there were comments left up that where the people didn't agree with me where they say you know well cat you're being unrealistic you know you need to let this family go if they if they can't embrace you and respect your wishes you need to let them go blah 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 I felt like those, the people who left those comments, and one person even said, I used to have a, di a different handle or a different channel. Uh, this is something new I've created, but I've followed you for years. I can take that way better than I can. Somebody's like, girl, you a whole felon. How you gonna have some standards about who you date? You better get who you want to. Are those men, they only, uh, 
going out with you for sex. They not going out with you because they going to marry you. You know, it's like if you say something like that, then I'm going to automatically know. Well, you don't like me no way. So it doesn't matter what you say. You know, what you say is tinted by the lens of you not liking me. I hope that makes sense. So, ladies, I want you to remember that as you approach life, period. One of the things I've learned from watching channels, like uh, one of the channels I watch is the Level Up Guru. I also watch Bourbon Bougie. I uh, also watch West 4B Movement. One of the things I love about all of those channels is they don't suffer fools kindly or lightly. They don't suffer fools, period. If somebody gets in their comments and is disrespectful, they block them or they hide them from the channel. And... I used to be like, no, I feel like I'll always, I don't care what people say, I'll always, you know, leave their comments up because I, you know, I can always look at a different opinion. But then sometimes you realize, girl, people just don't like you. Like, no matter what you say or do or anything, they're going to find something negative to say about it, you know. And I also feel like when that relative threw me under the bus in front of that man, she knew I had a channel then. Like, we had already come back from making up about my channel and that's the thing I don't think we ever made up I thought I think I thought we made up and she forgave me but we never really talked about it you know I told her okay well I won't talk about you on my channel anymore if we can be friends again you know and she still wasn't interested she came back into my life after that first time because her sister not my mother but the other sister the one I used to call the ratchet auntie you know was starting mess with her and it was like the I was the only one who could really understand and relate and understand where that was coming from so I was again useful to her and that that's a big part of being in her life is being useful to her if you if you lose your usefulness then she discards you and that's just the way it is with you know her and I have to understand and and respect that, that that's just the way some people's minds are built you know, and I'm, I'm not saying that there's anything I can do about that. You know, I, I move differently, you know. I remember one time we went to a strip club and there was this young girl. Uh, gosh, I think maybe she was 19. I'm not sure how old you have to be to strip. But this girl, I distinctly remember this girl being 19. And she was talking about moving to Dallas because we were in Houston. And she was young and I, you know, was trying to tell her she could dance at a white club and wait, make, make way more money. Any of y'all that know anything about the South and Houston strippers that are light skinned, biracial, big booties, that kind of thing. Those are the girls that are like the big dancers there, you know, like the ones that make a lot of money. So this relative went and got money at the ATM and we were throwing at that. This girl was dark skinned, petite, super petite. And I was trying to explain to her, girl, if you come to Dallas, don't dance at a black strip club. Go to a non-black strip club because that's where you could really make some money. And this relative was like, you know, I was telling her I wanted to give the girl my number. So when she got to Dallas, basically I could kind of help her, you know, navigate Dallas or whatever. She was like, girl, what is she doing for you? Like, how are you benefiting out of that? And I was like, well, it's not. It's just pouring into a young person that needs some guidance. And she was like, girl, that's a waste of your time. If they not paying for your time, da 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 da. And I could, and I didn't give the girl my number. And maybe that was a good thing, you know, that I'm not palling around with, you know, sex workers, because it's, you know, just not my ethics as far as something I'm willing to do for money, you know. But definitely something I've entertained more than once as far as going to strip clubs or whatever. So. My point in saying that is some people are going to look at things that only or look at people only in, in as much as they can benefit them. And you have to look at yourself in that equation, too, with the person. If you are no longer benefiting the person, you know, they're willing to discard you, too. And I think the same thing with subscribers. If they don't like you, if they, you know, for whatever reason, don't F with you anymore, but they still watch your content, you have to be taking that into consideration when they make comments about you you know it's like well this person didn't like me no way or once I stopped liking black men and stopped being willing to date blue collar men this person switched on me or once I revealed you know well this is my past this person had a problem or threw my crime up in my face blah 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 take that into life too and you guys may a lot of you guys may be like girl okay we already know that you know don't pay it don't what they say don't pay your haters no mind that kind of thing we already know that and maybe it's the lesson just I have to learn because I'm always, you know, thinking of stuff from, you know, giving people the benefit of the doubt kind of point of view. 
And that's something else I learned from, I think, maybe Level Up Guru. Is she was like, stop giving people the benefit of the doubt. That you should be doubting them. <laughs> so anyway, I'm at the office now. I will holler at y'all later. Y'all make it a good day. Bye.